Hello, this is Brian Scuttle of Sonic Cinema. I, one of the films that I took in for Fantasia Fest was the movie Under Gods. It's sort of an anthology of a desolate Europe um, with several stories taking place in there. I had a chance to talk to the filmmaker, Chino Moya, about the film, and I hope you enjoy that interview. So I wanted to talk to you about Under Gods, and the first question that I have for you, it's the most obvious question, is where did the idea for the movie come from? Um, to be honest, it didn't come from anywhere. As the way I wrote the script, it was a little bit of a stream of consciousness sort of a process. So I, I started the script without a plan. I didn't, I had no clue what, I, I just wanted to write the movie and, and make it. That was the only plan. So I started, uh, I started writing. So I, I decided one day that I was gonna, after trying unsuccessfully to, to get off the ground a few movies, one day I said, okay, I'm now just gonna write the, another movie and this movie I'm gonna make it. So I woke up next day and said, okay, I'm gonna start writing. Um, so, but I didn't know anything. I didn't, I, I didn't have an idea. I, I didn't have a plan. I didn't, so I, um, I started writing and the idea started coming along as I was, as I was writing. So I, every, every day I have to decide what, what happened next. So in a way, uh, yeah, I guess it, it all came from my more like, in a way I end up with a more personal script than most of the previous scripts I've, I've written. And probably it was just because this, the, these ideas or, or worries or themes that I have within me came out as I was writing. So, so yeah, there's no like any, and I guess they are all things, fears, worries, mm. influences, things about my childhood, things about the places where I grew up. But, um, but yeah, it was not, there was no any, there was, n there, w there was no preconceived ideas when I started writing. So there's, it's just, yeah, it was more like some form of weird psychotherapy or something. <laughs> right? it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say watching it, I when I I wasn't quite sure what I thought about when I first watched it, and then as I started writing my own thoughts on the movie, the more and more I started to think about it, the more and more it seemed to snap into focus for me, and I really started to appreciate a great deal of what you did. I love the what was I I kind of want to start with that first image that we see, and we see these. The these two, they're they're almost like garbage men, just yeah. following just on the street, and you have this this fog. What were some of the were there any particular films that inspired you visually to come up with those type of images? Um, again, same thing. I I was that that's actually the first image that I came up with. I remember I was. I decided, okay, I'm going to write a script. So I sat down and first thing I was like, okay, there's a man walking in a dilapidated city. And then I was like, and then he drops dead. And then I was like, and what is next? And then I said, oh, I decided, okay, well, maybe now the truck comes, a truck stops stops and and two ma two guys come come out of the truck and and put the the corpse inside mm -hmm. so everything was again it was the same but again i guess all those worlds i have some there's something about eastern europe and soviet union and ex communist countries that i i a lot of times seem seem to be drawn towards and I think mo yeah there was something that I clearly knew that that was that sort of environment that I wanted to do that 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 story was set up in some form of of collapsed Soviet Union or like a dilapidated apocalyptic 
Mm-hmm. So, 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 yeah, I think those again, it was like a pure something that came from from within. But, but yeah, it, it, it has to do with other things I've done in the past, and I've I've done a few more things with this sort of slightly apocalyptic kind of communist or ex-communist countries, and and there's something that I there's something about about this sort of failed utopias or failed communist utopias that I seem to gravitate a lot towards it. And I like the, I really like the idea of mixing that with some element of otherworldliness. So I guess, yeah, that's, and then obviously it's connected with a lot of movies and comic books that I've, Mm -hmm. I've seen and read Uh, mainly a lot of stuff from the earth late 70s and early 80s so i think that's yeah but that's definitely really a world that i've explored a little bit before in some music videos that i've done and i just wanted to fully expand it in, mm-hmm. in my movie yeah at what point in the uh, process of writing it did you sort of come up with this anthology type structure for the movie because um, it doesn't it's not, it's not strict anthology in the same way that we think of that that form, but it does sort of have that feeling of stories coming off of different um, different stories and or and basically just individual stories uh, being told, you know, without really too much connection between them. Yeah, I think. Um... I think that's the the almost the only thing I knew when I started writing the script is that I wanted to mix a few different stories within the script, and um, and the reason was because it seems to most of the stuff that I did or that I came up with, it's it was either those sort of failed post-communist utopias. Mm-hmm. Then I was also quite interested in kind of failed capitalist utopias of the 21st century. And there's something about the 70s and this slightly more than fairy tale 70s world that I also like. So then, and since it was my first film, I, I thought of what I wanted is to bring together all these different worlds that I normally try to use as context or, or setup for my my stories or the like music videos or short films or whatever and bring them all together in this one single film. Um, so then obviously this this idea of of going in and out of of the stories, it was a good structure for doing that. And I think I read also, there are a lot of I I uh, I was I think there's three things on one hand the more highbrow highbrow side of things is the is the metamorphosis by Ovid that I I read not like kind of um, a few months before I I wrote I I wrote the script and had it's a it's a collection of twenty hundred twenty. 250 stories mm-hmm. all within in this one single narrative and the transitions between them were all completely different mm-hmm. in one story Sally one story finishes as as someone starts telling a story and opens a new story another story is just someone uh, transforming into something and this something that this person transforms into becomes part of a new story so there were 250 stories all linked by by a lot of different transitions and I really like how how random that was um, then also Crypto uh, all these anthology films I grew up like Crypto mm-hmm. The Twilight Zone the movie I love those films as a kid like I love 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 those films I I there are films that for me were very, very important. 
And, and also then there was uh, Holy Motors, which is a more recent film that I, I saw and I really like how you were going in and out of these different worlds and things and, and how seamless that was. And so there was something that I, I, I've been always interested, interested in anthology films and in anthology, even, even in books. That's the, the kind of story within a story. Also, that's something that uh, even in books like Don Quixote, which is yeah, mm -hmm. kind of the main or the most famous Spanish novel, uh, it it has suddenly like occasionally Don Quixote bumps into someone on the road, and this person says, "Hi, I'm going to just tell you a story," and then for for the next hundred pages, someone is telling a love story. And then the story finishes, and we go back to the main narrative. To the main narrative, and it's mm -hmm. really random the way in which. And um, there was also the Saragota manuscript, that is a book, and also they made a film, a police film, I think, um, which also has that. Uh, so yeah, there's something that I always like about the stories within story and the randomness, mm -hmm. and how to use it in a in a more random way. Uh, there's another film called La Ronde and Le Placil by Max o both by Max Ophuls. Well, he uses that, but but um, but it, there's, they always have very specific La, La Ronde. I think they have. It's all about love and Le Placil about like sensual love or something. So all the stories mm -hmm. they are connected by this. Best. Whilst here, I wanted. The connection to be me somehow or my subconscious or what is mm -hmm. um, and in a way it was interesting because after putting all of that together and obviously there was a moment where i start i have to pitch the film to people so i have to make sense of what i wrote and then i have to try to find out why i did write what i think and why 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 did i write what i, what I wrote and, and to explain it to people and i think that process was almost like a good, like almost like a therapy sort of thing, because it helped me realize why I was gravitating towards those themes and stories and what elements of my upbringing of my personal life somehow had affected me in, in the way that those, those stories that I'm interested. And I guess one of the main things was that I was, um, yeah, I, I was born right after Franco, which was a Spanish dictator, mm -hmm. died. And I, so I was born like a couple of months after he died, and then I grew up as democracy was starting. So I somehow I was a child of this. I grew up in between, when I, when I was born, there was yet no democracy in Spain. And a few years later, democracy started. So in a way, I, I was born in this sort of in between time of like the end of a totalitarian era and the beginning of a free capitalist, crazy 80s money making mm. democracy time. And, and in a way, I saw the failure of both um, and how they're both just pure utopias and, and mm. things that they were just like a dream that didn't come true. And, and I guess that's the that's the essence. Some of the essence of Under Gods is mixing those 20, 20th century failed utopias with totalitarian utopias with twenty first century capitalist dreams, which were just another form of utopia, and, and how everything at the end falls apart, and and they just become what they were, just like a dream and nothing else. Yeah. What were some of the uh, challenges when it came to actually making the movie? Um, well, there were plenty. And, um, but, uh, I mean, in the initial, the first stage, obviously, was to find the locations and the actors. The locations had a very, very specific idea in mind of what I wanted. And... and uh, we just didn't know where to find those locations. So we started scouting throughout Europe and, and finally we found Belgrade. And that was, um, it had everything we needed. It had the failed 
20th century utopian, the 19th century fairy tale is mm -hmm. architecture in the old Belgrade, and all the new 21st century generic characterless buildings. So, in a way, and then casting the same, just I had a very specific idea of the type of people that I wanted, and it was things that you cannot always convey with words. So we have we saw a lot of people, a lot, a lot of a lot of people until we found the actors that that fitted the, the vision of undergods. And then make actual and then during the shoot there was just endless challenges. I think the main challenge was basically that we needed twice the budget to make the movie. Uh, that we did, and so we end up achieving what we wanted in terms of scale, but but we didn't have enough enough money to do it, so we have to push a lot in many levels just mm -hmm. to to get the number of extras, the scale, the the shooting dates, to build the sets, to have the VFX that we wanted, and. So it was how to stretch the budget and how to stretch the money without, and how to to get people on board to to do that with us and 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 how to survive mm -hmm. uh, the process. Yeah, so I think that's those pretty much. Yeah, like yeah, like overstretching the budget was the main main challenge. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for uh, talking to me today. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what the reaction to uh, the film yeah, is going to exactly. be. Yeah, exactly.